the last words of a dying man. It was September of 2000, around 3 a.m. in the morning, on the 21st Tower of St. Luke's on the cancer floor. I was laying on the couch, and in the bed laid my father. laying there with stage four prostate cancer, which had metastasized to all of his bones. And I was laying right next to him. And though three in the morning, he was up looking at the television. And although he was weak, voice very weak, body wasting away of cancer, he mumbled some words, saw him moving his mouth. And he said, I want to go home. Got closer to him, and I said, Dad, what did you say? He said, I want to go home. And I asked him the third time just to get good clarification that I understood what he was saying. All right, all right. He said, I want to go home. And at that time, I knew he was not talking about our physical home at 3218 Ashlock, Houston, Texas, 77047. But he was talking about his heavenly home. And his last words to me, is that I want to go home. These last words of my father, a dying man, was that I want to go home. These last words were weighty and lofty. They were heavy. Even after 18 years, I remember those words like yesterday because they have indelibly etched on my mind because of their severity. Matter of fact, a man's, a dying man's last words really show the gravity of the situation. And in the same way that my father, who was a man dying of cancer, gave me these last words, it's in the same way that the man in our text Come on, preach up. All right. named the Apostle Paul, yeah, yeah. who's also a dying man, yeah. Yeah. gives words to his son in the ministry, Timothy. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. And Timothy must take these words seriously. We will see today, brothers and sisters, that these words, these last words that the Apostle Paul gives his son in the faith, Timothy, who is a man of God, is still apropos come on, come on. Steel, right? for the man of God, steel. even on today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, the Apostle Paul is now in a cold, damp Roman prison. Or he's been in prison other times. And he has been released at other times. But this time is different from these other times because he will not be released. For just in a few days, Emperor Nero will chop his head off because he's been standing for the word of God. He's a dying man on death row. But before he meets death, he does not have his situation on his mind, but he has his son in the faith, Timothy, on his mind. 
And he's written him one letter. But now he writes to him a second letter. Second yes, Timothy 4.21. Yes, Timothy, Paul tells Timothy, uh, come see me before winter. Now we don't ever know if Timothy ever comes sees Paul. But even if he doesn't come see him, the last words that he writes in these letters, Timothy will receive him. And he begins in chapter 4 by stating, verse 1, speaking to Timothy, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. This last word, he gives him a command. And he says, preach the word. Now this word is a eris active imperative. Come on, man. And what he, Paul, is telling to Timothy is, is give it all you got. Timothy, when you preach, give it all that you got. In preaching the word, give it all you got. And Pastor Skinner, I want to stand flat-footed and command you, like Paul told Timothy, when you preach, and as you preach, give it all that you have. Um, you know, athletes, when they finish doing what they doing, athleting whatever they do, they usually get off the field and say, well, I left it all on the field. I left it all on the baseball field, all on the football field. Well, well, that's sports. That's entertainment. That's show. That has no eternal implications. But preaching has eternal ramifications. Sadly, some people think that to preach, the only thing that you need to do is go get your Bible, open up, go to a text, come up with some words in your head, and get up and say them. No, no, no. Preaching requires you to use every fiber of your body. It requires you to use all of your all of yourself spiritually and physically. It requires intense prayer. It requires confession of sin. It requires you submitting yourself to the text. It requires you being filled with the Holy Ghost. It requires quiet time. It requires emotion. Yes, right. It requires conviction. Yes, and for the black preacher, it requires sweat. Yes. Yes. And it requires that and more. Yes. Right. And I want to encourage you, Brother Pastor. Yes. Oh, I know you preach. Oh. I've seen you get after it. Yes. But I want to encourage you on this morning yes, that when you preach, Give it all that you got. I know you're getting older. I know gray hairs are popping on your head. But when you stand, give it all that you got. I know that you, I know you're waking up with pains now that you didn't have years ago. But when you stand, give it all that you got. I know you got more time behind you than you do in front of you. But give it all that you got. Because when you preach, 
you need to give it all that you have. I was raised up in a house with a pastor preacher who gave it all that he had. I mean, every funeral, every revival, every, 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 that little black man with sideburns would give it all that he had. And the command the Apostle Paul here to Timothy is that when you preach, give it all that you got. And Pastor Skinner, when you stand to preach, give it all that you got. But then in these last words, he, he, he continues, not only does Paul give him a command, but then Paul shows him how to execute the command. He continues in verse 2. He says, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. You young Timothy, but you need to be prepared to preach. Uh, be prepared in season when it's convenient and out of season when it's not convenient. Reprove, rebuke, exhort yeah. with great patience yeah. and understanding. Yes, sir. Now, church and Pastor Skinner, it's easy to be prepared for in-season preaching. Uh -huh. Come on, come on, come on. It ain't too much buffing you in in-season preaching. Yeah, yeah, in -season. Family's doing well, yeah. uh -huh. doing pretty good in health. Church family's doing good. Church is over budget. Souls are being saved. People are spiritually growing. That's in season preaching. Oh, but out of season preaching. Your health is not that good. Marriage is on the rocks. Family drama. Preacher drama. Deacon drum. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yourself drum. But the word is be persistent in season yeah. and out of season. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, right now I'm, I'm learning a lot about out of season preaching now. I learn a lot about out of season preaching. Right now I'm Helping and caring for aunt who's 97 years old. I'm out to a place about five or six times a week, making sure she's okay, buying her groceries for her, uh, doing things for her, making sure she gets to her doctor's appointments, making sure things are well with her. She's in, she's in the evening years of her life. And then I'm dealing with a 76-year-old mother yes, sir. whose short-term memory is getting worse day by day. She calls me about 20 times within an hour because she doesn't, she forgets where she is. But that ain't it. I've, I've been lied on. I've been ridiculed. But yet, I must stand and preach the gospel. And brothers and sisters, that's the God called, that's the charge for every God called pastor and preacher. Pastor Skinner, you must be prepared to preach in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and understanding. Now, when you, you're preaching, uh -huh. ought to be laced with all of that. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and understanding. Now, uh, when you reprove and rebuke, 
folk in your preaching. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Don't be shocked when folk don't come up and shake your hand. Don't be shocked when they get out on the parking lot and on the phone and have fried Skinner. Don't be shocked when they look at you as you preach with rocks in their jaw. Uh, uh, don't be shocked and angry when they hold their pocketbook. Uh, don't be don't be flaky about all of that because remember you are employed by God and not man remember who called you remember who sanctified you remember who gifted you remember who placed you and remember who can remove you at any time God and God alone. I can hear God telling Jeremiah, don't be afraid of their faces. Uh, look crazy if you want. Smile or frown or get mad if you want. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort. With great patience and understanding. The closing words of verse 2. Paul shows him how to implement this command. And these words are suitable, Pastor Skinner, for you right now. But then Paul, this dying man on death row, continues in his last words. In verses 3 and verse 4. But the time will come. When people will not put up with sound doctrine, instead to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. Uh, uh, young Tim, a time is coming uh, that, 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 that church folk who you preach to are going, to, are going to turn a deaf ear to your preaching. All right. All right. They're going to go look after Reverend so-and-so yeah. right. and Pastor so-and-so who are saying what they want to hear. Yeah. All right. They're going to turn away from the truth yeah. and believe a lie. All right. Church and Pastor Skinner, that time is upon us right now. Church folk yeah. are turning away from the truth. Yeah. Going finding pastor so and so yeah. who's saying what they want to hear. Yeah. Turning away from truth yeah. and believing a lie. Yeah. You see it yeah. and I see it. Yeah. It's all on social media. All right. It's all on Facebook, IG, Snapchat. Twitter. All right. False doctrine of teachers everywhere. Come on. Pastors talking about God knows if you need to dabble in a little sin, that's all right. God knows if you need your back scratched. Come on, man. Come on. God understands when you need to take a little nip every now and then. Oh, they got jokers out there like that. I know them, and you know them. Right. You see them, don't you? Yeah. Pastors, uh -huh. <laughs> We're in that time now. Come on, and brothers and sisters, I'm going to drop this in. The only way you can refute some of this mess is by knowing what sound doctrine is. In order to know what it's not, you need to know what it is. Fill your head with what it is so you will know what it's not.
when I was a baby in 78, a man by the name of Reverend Jim Jones, who started off pretty good, started off as a Lord's preacher, took a whole lot of folk down to Guyana, had them drink some cyanide Kool-Aid, and they all died. And I wish the spirit of Jim Jones would have died when he died. But it's alive and prevalent on today. Be careful about who you listen to. Be careful where you get your spiritual diet from. And if that joker ain't preaching the word of God, don't listen to it and throw it up, puke it out. Turn away from it. Because your salvation is too important. So Pastor Skinner, don't 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 get too don't 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 get upstirred and, and don't get shaken when people come in here and join and they stay for a few weeks and then they leave. Because when you preach Christ, not only does it draw you, but it also drives you. And everybody coming through these doors ain't looking to hear about Jesus. You know, they'll say, they'll say, they'll say, you preaching too much Jesus. Can't you preach? Can't you preach something else? You know, my dad is giving me a hard time. Preach something else. Well, when you preach Jesus, you do cover everything else. You know, they may say that. But thank God, because I believe there are some folk here in Good Shepherd that don't mind hearing about that name every Sunday. I believe there's some people in here who say that's a good name. I believe there's some people in here who say there's power in that name. I believe there's some people in here who say that's joy in that name. I believe there's some people in here who can identify and say there's power in that name. I believe some people in here can identify with that hymn of the church that says how sweet the name of Jesus sounds in the believers here. It soothes my sorrow, drives away the fear. That name Jesus. Jesus in the morning. Jesus in the noonday. Jesus at midnight. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. So, 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 don't worry. If they leave, let them jokers leave. Because you, 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 because, because just because you're, you're, you're preaching. Preaching Jesus may tune somebody out. They'll tune you out. Leave out this door. And go down about six or seven blocks. Or three or four miles. And find somebody who's teaching what they want to hear. So, don't worry about that. Stand and preach Jesus. For the time is coming and has arrived. That church folk will turn their ears from the truth. Go find Pastor Bobo who's preaching what they want to hear and, and, and they'll turn away from the truth and believe a bold face lie. But then the Apostle 
Apostle Paul continued. And in verse 5, in his last verse, he gives more imperatives for Timothy's ministry. He says, but you keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. Timothy, other version says, other, 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 other translation says, uh, 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 be sober-minded. Yeah. Yeah. Be well-disciplined. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this word, this command, uh-huh. is, is in the present active imperative. Yeah. All right. yeah. Which literally means continue yeah. to be sober-minded. Continue to be well disciplined. Timothy, you're going to come up against some things and some people that's going to want to make you cuss in French. Yeah, Shay. My folk, they from Oakland, Louisiana, so I know some of it too. But, 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 but be well controlled. In all things. Timothy, you're going to hear some things that's going to make you want to. But be well controlled in all things. Uh, Pastor Skinner, be well controlled, continue in all things. Uh, You, Lord, has blessed you to be here some 28 years. And I know you've experienced a lot of things. But yet there are a lot of things you have not experienced. And there are a lot of things that you will experience. And so when those times come and your nerves get shaken and you want to blow your top, remember these words, be continually wowed, controlled. And that go for all of us loose cannons in here. Yeah, you a loose cannon. You looking churchy, but you a loose cannon. You don't bridle your tongue. You give people a piece of your mouth. You might have did it this morning. But whenever it comes, be well controlled in all things. And then he continues in giving commands. He says, endure hardship. Endure hardship. Now he's already said this in chapter 2, verse 3. There he said, endure hardship as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. So here he says it again to make it emphatic. Timothy, endure hardship. Suffer for the gospel. Endure hardship. Suffer for the gospel. Pastor Skinner, endure hardship. Suffer for the gospel. Now, don't you allow your suffering for the gospel to allow your heart to become calloused against God, his work, and his people. Don't you allow it to make you hard-hearted because of what folk do to you. Because if you don't watch Satan, brothers and sisters, he'll prompt you to view what comes at you that God's allowed with suffering in a negative way. Right now, I know a pastor. And I do know many of them. um, Who's going through right now. Uh, uh, he's suffering right now and he has a negative spin on everything he's negative in everything his preaching is negative it's always a bit on a scripture 
And I mean negative, negative, negative. But then I know a brother who's been going through uh, in and out of the hospital, uh, been waiting on a kidney transplant for years, has seizures, is an epileptic. And when you see him, always has a smile on his face. Always right. grinning. Yeah. And every time you say, Brother President, how you doing? I'm holding on. Here two men yeah. suffer yeah. and is pushing them in opposite yeah. direction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, when you suffer and enduring it for Christ, Pastor, uh, let it push you in the positive direction toward the Lord because you're not in your suffering alone God is with you and that ought to be a word for somebody here this morning that, 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 that you're not in your suffering alone God is with you oh I know how you feel right now I know you feel like crying and throwing up your hands but God is with you in your suffering he, did, didn't you wake up with him this morning? Yes, He's with you right now. He's with you right now. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's with you in your suffering. Now let's be honest. Some of this suffering that we're enduring is because of us. You got high blood pressure because you won't put them pork chops down. That person wants to curse you out because you lied on them. That person is after you because of what you did to their spouse. All suffering ain't godly suffering. But here, we're speaking about God. Suffer. You can endure godless suffering because God is with you in your suffering. I know I gotta suffer for the gospel. I know I will suffer for the gospel. But greater is he that is in me than in he that's in the world. Timothy endure hardness in this ministry. But then he concludes in verse 5 by saying, fulfill your ministry. Fulfill your ministry. Uh, 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 Tim, Tim, fulfill your ministry. Uh, don't you get in competition with Titus who's in Crete? Fulfill your ministry. Don't judge your ministry by somebody else's ministry. Fulfill your ministry. Don't, 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 don't think this is a competition. Don't get to looking at someone else, That's Timothy. It. Fulfill your ministry. Uh, Pastor Skinner, fulfill your ministry. Uh, fulfill your ministry. Oh, I missed a point. I'm going to get back to that. Let me get to my other one. I missed something. He says, do the work of an evangelist. I'm sorry, I get happy, I get a good blah. Do the work of an evangelist. Yes, yeah. Timothy, as you go, go out pointing people to Christ. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Even though I know you're the pastor of the Ephesian church, uh, but continue to go out and evangelize. 
And good shepherd, I want to thank you in these 28 years that you've allowed this pastor to have the liberty to go out and evangelize. God's gifted him. He's God's preacher. I want to thank you for that. Uh, he's not a jack leg preacher. He does not preach long horn sermons. Long in length. And a lot of bull in the middle. No, no, no. No, no. He's balanced in his preaching. He preaches from Genesis to Revelation. You know, you, you got some popular pastors in Houston that only stay in one book of the Bible because it's easy to preach and don't require a lot of study. And then you got some pastors that don't preach some doctrines because they don't know where they stand on the doctrine. But you have a pastor preacher who preaches from Genesis to Revelation and preaches doctrine. Continue to do the work of an evangelist. Then he ends, verse 5. His last words, concluding in 5. Fulfilled your ministry. Get your focus off what everybody else is doing and fulfill your ministry. Pastor Skinner, fulfill your ministry. Your ministry does not include anyone else. Your ministry does not include anyone else but your ministry. And Reverend Skinner, you can fulfill your ministry because you have been fulfilled by the fulfiller who is Jesus Christ and you have been filled with the Holy Ghost so you can fulfill your ministry now brothers and sisters I need to tell you who this fulfiller is I don't want to assume everybody in here know who this fulfiller is you looking mighty churchy but you may be lost and on your way to hell so I need to tell you who this fulfiller is if you have not accepted him as Savior, after I finish telling you who he is, my prayer is that you will accept him and let him fulfill your life. He is deity. He is God in the flesh. He is human. He lived and breathed on this old earth. He was born by a virgin birth. Joseph, his stepfather, had nothing to do with his conception. Luke tells us that the Holy Ghost implanted him into Mary's womb and he came out as a virgin birth. He lived a sinless life. He was tempted like you and me, yet without sin. Uh, he is the only Lamb of God. He, there's no one else who ever lived like him and there's no one else who ever lived like him. He is the perfect Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the whole world. He died a substitutionary death on the cross, which means he's died in your place and my place. And on that cross, he shed blood, enough blood to forgive past, present, and future sins. And on that cross, he died. He didn't swoon. He didn't drift into a coma. He didn't faint. He didn't pass out. He died. They laid him in Joseph's new tomb. Stay there all night Friday. Stay there all night Friday night. All day Saturday and all night Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, he got up out the grave saying all power is in my hand. And if you are a sinner, you must repent of your sin and trust the complete, completed work of Christ. That's who Jesus is. That's who the fulfiller is. He will fulfill your life and give you a brand new life. And Skinner, that's why you can complete your ministry is because of the fulfiller. He'll fulfill you to continue to do what you need to do in preaching the word. And you still 
need to fulfill your ministry in preaching. And the question comes, well, why? Well, I tell you why. People are still lost and on their way to hell. Fulfill your ministry. Why? Women are still being raped. Fulfill your ministry. Why? Children are still being abused. Fulfill your ministry. Why? Divorces are still the rampant. Fulfill your ministry. Why? People are still broken hearted. People still deal with pain. People are just broken vessels themselves. Fulfill your ministry because there needs to be more joy, more love, more hope preached by Jesus Christ. Fulfill your ministry and when you fulfilled your ministry you can adopt yeah Apostle Paul's other last words found in chapter 4 I fought a good fight I finished my course I've kept the faith and now there's a crown of righteousness laid up for me not only for me but all those who love his appearing and when you adopt those words you can listen for that voice you can listen for that sweet voice it's a voice that sounds so sweet that the birds hush their singing there's a voice that's so powerful that makes the winds and the waves obey there's a voice that's so powerful that makes the grave lose its hold and give up the dead it's the voice of the Lord Jesus he'll say servant well done you've been faithful over a few things come on up and I'll make you ruler over many things but until the meantime until he calls you preach the word 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 I preach I preach I preach I preach I preach preach the word preach it all preach it all and remember it's you that's not preaching you're just a vessel but it's who lives inside of you called the Holy Ghost he will help you preach he'll help you continue to preach the word that's all you need to do preach 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 the word and the word while preaching will rejuvenate you it'll give you joy it'll give you power to be able to preach some more preach it all 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 I preach, I preach, I preach, I 